uh, the U.S. Army. It is the oldest and the largest of all the armed forces, and it's the main ground force. The uh, I'll let you guys read that part there. It's Congress, yeah, like David said, way back when, uh, even before he was born. Okay, and uh, there is with the Army, and here's where there'll be some distinctions across the different service branches. The Army has an active component. That means the guys whose job 24-7 is to be in the Army. And then it also has two kinds of not always active components, the, the reserve components. Uh, one is the Army Reserve, which is the already federal on, uh, on hold, if you will, on, on reserve uh, component that can be called up. And then each state has commanded through the governor at the state level uh, the Army National Guard. Okay, and for you again, it's just it's just knowledge so that you can better hear what's going on with the veteran. You're not going to get into the matrix of okay, well, which kind of service did you do for how many months or years, and that means you get this benefit or that. Just be aware that there is that matrix of okay, some benefits you're going to qualify 100% for. Some it's a sliding scale. Some nada. Okay. Army Corps values leadership, LDR leadership. So loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. Wow. That's a lot of stuff to cram in there. And, and uh, if you're in the Army, I think you probably know all of those, though. Know and live by them. Okay, now we really are, are sincerely getting into the culture behind this person that may walk in and, and sit down and talk with you. Okay, USN. Anchors away, second largest branch of the service, and second oldest. Uh, well, maybe it's third, huh? depending on how the Marines feel about it. The Marine Corps is uh, a uh, department, is part of the Department of the Navy. And uh, if you, you know, male Marines like to make a sort of sexist comment about that, saying, oh yeah, it's the Department of the Men's Department. But that's a bit of a, a, an anachronism now, isn't it? I mean, that's kind of antiquated um, because, as we all know, women serve in the Marines uh, right alongside their male counterparts. The Navy uh, is uh, active and reserve components. That, again, reserve meaning the federal level of the backup plan, okay, for the active 24-7 uh, naval personnel. But the Navy does not have, there are no Navy National Guard units at the state levels. Uh, Navy, uh, not only uh, is it important for them to uh, fight, uh, fight wars, defend the nation from the sea, um, they also have airplanes. I really don't understand why they let the Navy have airplanes, but they, they don't really let the Air Force have boats. I mean, I actually, actually, I think they do at some select locations. Yeah, I know. It's you know. It's, I guess it was a natural progression, um, and they have to transport those Marines who also pretty much defend them. So I think it's a good symbiosis they got going on there. Navy has a set of core values. Instead of LDR or SHIP, they just have honor, courage, commitment, and the kind of things you could splash out on a 30-second uh, advertisement. The Air Force has uh, similarly streamlined their core values so that they are straightforward, easy to remember, um, just speak to the, the heart of the matter, which is uh, integrity for service before self, excellence in all we do. Um, we all try to achieve those um, with varying success, let's put it that way. That's what you will be seeing if you have an Air Force person uh, come, into your, come into your place. The U.S. Marine Corps talked about how they were conceived of in a bar. I think that's important to remember. And uh, conduct amphibious warfare, getting from the sea to the land, being the first ones in. They are unique in that they can be directed directly from the president to go do a mission. And they are typically the only service branch as a whole that, that can be uh, ordered to do so. Uh, now, there are exceptions in the modern world with certain joint force teams that are, that are built up uh, with, a, with a certain task in mind. Um, a, a recent one that comes to mind is the uh, SEAL Team 6 and everybody else from the other service branches that were involved in getting them um, out the door to where they needed to go that ultimately uh, found and terminated Osama bin Laden 
was in fact directed uh, by the president to exer- uh, by his authority to uh, to exercise that mission, not by an act of Congress like typically the rest of the service branches are required to be ordered. Okay, the Marines, smallest of all the branches, and yet for some reason you feel like Marines are everywhere around you. But I think it has more to do with you know that they're the Marines and they will tell you so. And quite frankly, I believe they earned every last bit of pride that they display. They are similar to the Navy uh, in that of their branch of service, they only have an active component and reserve component. Again, no state national guard for the Marines. Does not exist. Uh, honor, courage, commitment. Ah, uh, that's uh, Navy again. Don't tell a Marine that. It's, it is, in fact, same, same core values or very close to the U.S. Coast Guard. Remember, um, technically not an armed force, yes, but not part of the Department of Defense. Uh, under the Department of Homeland Security. However, a veteran from the Coast Guard ends up with the same kind of treatment, typically, again, entering that matrix of, okay, which benefits based on where you served and how long you served, but the same kind of treatment, veteran status. Okay, so um, maritime safety, security, mobility, national defense, protection of national resources, and that actually happens all throughout the world, right? Not just our physical coastliners. Okay, here's a very quick example from just one of the service branches, the biggest one, the U.S. Army. Um, Because if you play the odds, this is who you will see more frequently than not is a veteran of the U.S. Army. Um, And here's an idea of some, some cool terms that the military slings around. And sometimes we start to sling it around. In outside the military circles where we just assume everybody knows what we're saying. Yeah, I was a, I was a squad leader and you know I had my guys and humping it over the this that with our M4s and yeah. So anyway, squad, smallest group of army troopers usually led by a sergeant. You can read the rest. Um, and again, you can see when it, when it comes to, hey, you're starting to look more like a corporate organization with number of, a larger number of employees, it's even called a company. And it's led by an officer, a mid-level, junior to mid-level officer, captain. And then when you get really big, you know, you get a division. Um, and and that's, that's like a big company. Major general, be like a CEO. Okay. Very different, uh, in names at least, but the same kind of structure where you go from small numbers of people to huge numbers of people junior to mid-level enlisted through the junior officers to the senior and then general officers or flag officers. Okay, All the service branches behave the same way in that small to big um, enlisted to officer ranks. This is all just the Army. Yeah, U.S. military ground forces uh, actually Army. Um, although, uh, you know, in the Marine Corps, in certain uh, certain units within the Marine Corps, it will it will look very similar. You can have Marine platoons, Marine companies, et cetera, led by the same sort of ranks, sort of. You know, you have lance corporals instead of sergeants, uh, I think, platoon level. Yeah, g- yeah, gunny sergeant, gunnery sergeant, cop. Yeah, you get a, you know, just, just sit down with a Marine sometime and buy him a coffee and try to get it all decoded. Um, and the reason I'm not going to go through slides for every one of these service branches is because it, it's important that you have a flavor for it. It's not important that you know it cold or that you even remember. Uh, this chart, okay? You just want to have that awareness that they all have their own kind of corporate speak. And it is actually, it feeds that sort of fraternal feeling, um, that that band of brothers and sisters kind of mentality, okay? So we want to understand it. We don't don't want to, you know, shun it or, or throw it under the rug. We want to seek to understand it. And it's good that we don't try to memorize it from all the different services. You get to let the veteran who appears before you teach you a little about it. It's more fun that way. 